Hello and welcome back to the latest episode of the Captain's Horror Meltdown. My name is Cammy and I will be your captain on this ship oh, we're back. journey. Yep, 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 good, good. We're back on the ship, aren't we? Yeah, I was getting very confused in the way we're I going I was very really getting forwards. confused, but we're back on the ship. And I, I am joined, as always, by the ship's jizz mopper. Whoa, what? John, which I don't know if it's technically a job that is real on boats uh, I I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna extend my imagination <laughs> see i think you've just made that up <laughs> but i think that if uh, if uh, any of your any of our listeners who have seen the film that we're going to be talking about tonight <laughs> have seen the film they'll know why we this is an important role is it important journey. i'm going to be honest uh <laughs> ripping off a jaws line you're going to need a bigger mop <laughs> We will need a bigger mop. <laughs> um, um, so, how do you feel about that role, John? Um, you know, I'm not over the moon about it, but as new things in life have decided this year, I'm just going to embrace them. <laughs> it's it's um, probably, prob- I'd say it's probably an entry level job on our ship. I would but imagine. Since yeah. <laughs> since, <laughs> it's since, not a high up <laughs> job, I would have thought. Um, I mean, there unless there's a large disorder. degree of skill needed in just mopping, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm, I've, uh, I'm about to find out, I guess. I shall uh, see yeah. what the role entails. I have, uh, can I just point out, I've got no previous experience of this role. Excellent. Well, I did uh, I actually I uh, read uh, an interesting article uh, by a an interview with an actual jizz mopper from a what? Uh, oh. like from a from a porn a nudie booth nudie booth place. Uh, right. Once. Quite an interesting chap. Seen a lot of sights. <laughs> sure he has. Jesus. <laughs> totally. Mopped a lot of them up. <laughs> <laughs> totally. He's quite dead to earth. Anyway, um, <laughs> shall <laughs> shall we uh, shall we? We're, going to, we're trying to streamline the stream, streamline the podcast. Well, we are, I, think, I think we're going to be honest in here. We're going to try and put this out roughly unedited, just to make things a bit easier. So we're going to see how that works out for us. It'll um, probably be. I mean, it'll probably be fine. But I, I suppose I, 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 we, we'll just shorten our uh, usual bullshit at the start, I guess. Um, yeah. But just, have you done anything interesting? It's I'm quite sure. I, actually, I like honestly. I was trying to think of this earlier. I've done absolutely nothing interesting at all since we, in 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 terms of horror or exploitation films or anything like that, um, since our, our last recording, which right. was a little side mission. I've not watched a single horror film. I don't think. Oh no, I have actually. I watched a a whole plethora of. Uh, Christmas themed horror films. Yep, yep. Uh, which was all, which was good. A lot of them I hadn't seen before. Good. Uh, and uh, the, well, I guess the other sort of film related thing for me is that uh, we are in. A, we, we've decided that twenty nineteen is the year of not spending money, and so I've decided that I am not buying any Blu rays this year, except for ones that are absolutely required for this podcast. Oh, oh right, so n- nothing at all outside that. No, I don't think so. Although uh, there may be an exception made if I basically have to sell some Blu-rays to make money to buy new Blu-rays. Right. Yes, I've got a, a, a similar theme. I uh, the only horror I've gone through uh, since we last chatted was I, I decorated my office. Yeah. Um, which you know, you know, you get those things that seem like a great idea at the time. And then you just get past the point of no return. And you're like, I wish I hadn't fucking started this. Yeah, brutal one. Brutal. It, was, it was one of those. There was just stuff everywhere. I sent you the picture of <laughs> cables that were behind, <laughs> that had been secreted behind my unit, and it was absolutely brutal. Horrendous, man. Horrendous. I mean, put it in perspective, when I put this place back together, I had to rewire a whole surround system, like <sighs> computers, hard drives, Amps, record player, uh, just horrendous, absolutely horrendous. Um, oh, jeez. Oh, oh, I just took delivery of my new, smaller, streamlined fridge. We're talking about streamlining as well. Nice, um, good. But it took me back to an excellent conversation I had back in the day with a really annoying flatmate. We moved into this place together um, with another guy, and he didn't understand the concept of fridges, which I thought was unusual for a professional chef. Um, right. It was like, well, I said to him, the fridge is unusually high. Um, maybe we should turn it down a bit. And he goes, I think it's it's fine. Um, 
Oh no, I think it was like usually low. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, usually low. It was like super cold. Yeah, no, no, it was usually low. It's like it was the setting was low, so it was quite warm in the fridge. He had it right, like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. He had it at two, and I was like, well, why don't we put it to five? And he goes, but surely that's going to make it hotter. I was like, what are you talking about? And he goes, well, surely one, surely five is going to be the hottest, and then one is going to be the coldest. And I was like, no, you don't understand. It's what this thing does. It refrigerates things. So the higher the level you put, the more it will refrigerate things. But, but the concept was massively over his head. And I've he never go, actually considered it before. Well, there I you go. Really <laughs> you, well, you wouldn't have to because you're not so mad that you would think that's how it works. Its job is to refrigerate. Therefore, the more you ask it to do something, the higher up the number is. Like, uh, like, like, I... like an oven. The higher up you put that, the hotter it gets. The lower you put it down, <laughs> the colder it is. And it's just reverse because this thing makes things cold. cold. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> well, actually, for a second there, I thought that what you were going to say was that he was uh, turning the fridge off like a night or something like that. Or oh, turning Jesus. it on and off. That would be bad. That would be amazing. That would be not good. Freezer the lot. Absolutely oh, amazing. Brutal. <laughs> brutal. Anyway. Right, so shall we play on yes. with the movie? Yes, so, do this. Uh, take, take us last, through this, Cammy. <laughs> so, last proper episode yes. in the chain, we watched uh, the Toxic Avenger. Yep, the trauma classic. So, the link is. So, this is a film. The this week's film uh, was released by Trauma, which yep. is the link, and it is called The Taint. Yes, the Taint Ooh. from 2010. Although mm-hmm. I have to say, we're going to get into this a little bit later on, but. There's very, very, very scant information about this. There is. I mean, film it, online. Yeah, almost nothing. It's a There's film. There's not like, even a Wikipedia entry for it. Oh, isn't there? No. Oh, it's on IMDb, certainly. Um, it's on IMDb and Letterbox and stuff, but there's almost zero information about it. Yeah, I just out there. maybe not hugely surprising, but it's, it's an interesting film. I mean, it's it was well distributed independently for quite a while. Before and, tr- trauma and then picked, picked up. up by trauma, yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, the big reveal in this is I've actually seen this in the cinema. But <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, totally. I and mean, we will get we'll, we will get to that. I mean, I'm saying 2010, but I did see it listed as 2011. But we'll we'll find it. I'm interested to to talk to you further about about your first viewing of it, and that's how mm-hmm. I actually came across it as well after you'd seen it in the cinema. But. Um, yeah, well, I guess we're we're not going to do a full run through of the film anymore. We're just going to give a little sort of uh, synopsis. Aren't yeah, we? I think my feeling um, is uh, I, think, I, I don't want. To, I think yeah, let's let people watch the film themselves and they can find out. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's bad. We shouldn't really just tell everybody every detail that happens. No, we shouldn't. Really. <laughs> we shouldn't. We should. So but you, can, you can feel free to go into this. For, you can listen to this and then watch the film instead of doing it the other way around. Although we prefer you to watch the film first, obviously. Uh, I'm actually, and I was thinking about like, uh, you know, will I just come up with a bit of uh, a little bit of a sort of synopsis myself or whatever? But actually, sort of belatedly this afternoon, I was looking on the Troma website and found their page for the film. And oh, okay. I'm just going to read a little bit of that. Actually. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I it's think good. It's, uh, it's good. It's yeah, good. It's, it's perfect. So, <laughs> so this is a synopsis put forward by Trauma. <laughs> the water is tainted. The taint poisons the mind of minds of men. It turns them into raging misogynists, monsters who want nothing more than to kill women. When society is transformed into a land of sadistic violence and horrible brutality, it's up to Phil O'Ginny <laughs> and his female friend, Missandra, to combat the horrible evil that is the taint. And that's it. Yep. Although yep. it does have a great bit after that. It says, <laughs> the taint is an intellectual experience. <laughs> it's a violent and misogynistic <laughs> film about violence, misogyny and entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Very, very classic trauma business. It features sadistic violence, gratuitous sexual content, Ooh. and scenes of spellbinding <laughs> dramatic interest. It also contains more cock explosions than any other movie ever. So there you go. <laughs> that last line is 100% correct. Yeah. Um, and the, the one of the directors uh, described it as the ultimate sexually frustrated male nerd emotional masturbation release film yeah. done in the style of an 80s horror comedy. Comedy. Yeah, yeah, okay. So there you go. But yeah, so so basically, we, we start the film. As I, we start the film uh, with what is 
pretty much yeah. Well, there's a, a short uh, pre-credit sequence uh, yeah. where you see our hero, where we meet our hero, getting chased by a farmer, um, and we see a lot of boobs, which early on, and yeah. and, uh, I, and a severed cock. So yeah, I think what, what I've got to say is like one thing I noted about this is this probably happens within the first two minutes. You will find a defecation, a severed penis, copious yeah. vomit. Uh, yeah. jizz spurting cocks and an exploding head yeah and I think that's before the credits start to roll for the intro yeah pretty good yeah pretty good going so it's, that it's sets you up nice. fairly nicely about is it <laughs> it's what's going to come uh, yeah totally so ba- well basically we've got felt we've got that but so the water uh, very efficient uh, bit of storytelling actually the the the, the whole the whole set of the film is just uh, told silently yeah. through the credit sequence. Medium, we see, through the medium of stock footage. It, totally, stock <laughs> footage. We see that basically scientists have released some kind of chemical into the water and everyone's gone mad. And basically, uh, Phil, our, I guess, hero, he's not really the hero, is he? Mm, no, Sandra, no. I guess, more is. But um, he is just his adventures in this crazy world where all men that have been affected by the taint want to kill women with rocks it seems they generally want to bash their heads with rocks yeah yeah there's but various methods also but rock have is... uncontrolled jizzing yeah uh boners yeah i mean every man affected is like i mean their cock is out it's it's out it's there on yeah. display Hang, hanging out the trousers just yeah. sort of you know sometimes just dribbling jizz constantly sometimes fountains of it in <laughs> yeah, you know in women's just... faces <laughs> and it's like wow this is this is a heady heady thing that's going on here <laughs> it's pretty full on and we go through uh yeah so it's uh basically just a lot of violence um and it just yeah, fires through a uh, rollicking pace. Let's have a little bit of a chat about the team, then our, our experience of it. Yep. And I think, uh, I, I, as we mentioned uh, at the start of the podcast, you, so this was actually an early, it wasn't, this wasn't the first Captain's Horror Meltdown that we had, was it? Was it the second one? Second one, I think, is when we saw it on mass. We I saw think. it yeah. on mass, and Dave brought it over was that the his night, film. Was that the night the fried Auntie, chicken? It was the fried chicken incident. Yeah, yeah, God, that was one of the most scary things ever. Oh, man. I was extremely drunk. Deep in frying. Of deep frying um, chicken. A lot of chicken wings as well, man. It was. It was, it was, was a like constant like five ki- It was like five kilos of chicken wings Just, or something. Yeah, and the thing is, you couldn't be stopped. <laughs> You'd absolutely lost your mind. It was kind of like a, a taint version of chicken frying. It was, it was fairly demented. Um, so the Captain's uh, Horror Meltdown is not only the title of this podcast, but it's also a sort of uh, ongoing... Um, it was initially annual, but now it just sort of happens when we fancy we, it. Yeah. When we fancy it, so, yeah. <laughs> um, film festival, mini film festival that I uh, organise. That uh, there's a group of us uh, all attend, and we basically the crack is everyone brings along a film, and there can be no arguing. When it's your turn to put on your film, you get to put on your film. Yeah, and if you don't like it, then tough shit. So yeah, I think I think the taint appeared when we we didn't have a theme that year. I don't think it was just no. There was no theme. It was a pre pre theme one, and it was a. Uh, so I think we'd already watched the Greasy Strangler. Yep. Or did we? No. Or was, did we? No. We watched the, the taint first. We watched the taint first, and then we watched the Greasy Strangler. What yeah. a double bill, man! Unbelievable. What a double bill. So many fluids. Insanity. Woof. Oh, insanity. <laughs> but. The Taint, I'd never actually heard of The Taint before. Uh, Dave brought it along on DVD. Was that a French DVD he had? Uh, French Blu-ray, yeah. French Blu-ray. Yeah. So uh, Dave brought that along. Um, but you and Dave had actually seen it in the cinema. Yeah. Well, well, Tell I, us a little bit about that. It wasn't technically a cinema. I think it's like an art centre. It's just very hazy memories, obviously. We're talking like and, almost nine years ago now, I guess. But Yeah. No, well, I suppose it is. But um, yes, we went to... It was a two-day horror film festival. And The Taint was one of the things that was on. And it's one of those films where <laughs> it's you're constantly looking around at the person that you're with going, what on earth <laughs> is going on here? <laughs> and <clears throat> as we've said, we've seen a lot of crazy shit. And yeah. this really is up there with one of the most outrageous bits of film I've it really is. ever seen. It's... <laughs> I mean, I mean, what it's could bold. you what could you even compare it to? I mean, nothing. 
it's yeah. completely berserk. Um, I think I think I, I I would say that my 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 initial so for watching it, I, I'll also I'll say I think I said it before when when I started watching it. Uh, I think I sent you a message. Basically, I was so pissed <laughs> at that horror meltdown screening that. It was like I was going in fresh here mm, this time, mm. but it's, it did all come flooding back as we were going along. But I was Literally, like, "Oh yeah. yeah, here we go! Oh yeah!" But uh, watching it this time, I, I I think that the the most instant vibe that I get from it is bad taste. Yeah, I've got that noted down. Yeah, but, it's got a definite bad taste vibe to it. Yeah, Peter Jackson's first film, uh, Absolute Madness. I, it, it, anyone that hasn't, any listeners that haven't seen Bad Taste, it's actually pretty probably pretty tricky to get hold of here well now. of course it's, we're looking forward to the uh yeah, he's gonna the blu-ray release yeah the big uh 4k Ooh. restoration hello <laughs> <laughs> i cannot Happy wait days. and meet oh. the feebles holy shit holy shit uh, uh is he doing brain dead as well yeah i, mean, I think he's doing his doing, uh, he's doing his gore films yeah so, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. sweet uh, um yeah that's the that's the the vibe very 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 low budget uh, zero budget, practically. I would, I would say. say so. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, and with a real sort of homemade vibe to. It, um, I mean, I haven't uh, said that. There's a lot of really, you know, there's a lot c- good special effects in it and stuff. Some oh, really totally. ropey ones as well, but some really nice kind of. And you know, obviously they're setting that going for that eighties kind of vibe, and they pull it off really yeah. well. I've got to say, they do, they do, they do. And uh, so, so what was it? So. And it was in Belfast you saw it in the cinema? It was in Belfast. Uh, some sort of art. The weirdest thing about that place, right, is we went in there and they had these kind of seats set up like a cinema. Yeah. Um, as you'd expect to go into a cinema, but obviously removable seats because the next day we went into the same room and all those seats had gone and been replaced by couches. Right. We walked in, it's like, what the fuck is going on in here? The whole thing had just changed. Shit. <laughs> Shit. Like, right. To the point, and the first film that came on that day was so unhorror related. We actually went to the box office and said, "Are we even in the right place?" In the right place. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Yeah. Um, so it was a very, it was a very strange vibe, and I'd have to go back to even see if they've actually. I don't. I don't think they've. I don't think it's an annual thing, but. Um, but yeah. How they? So obviously, someone's been. Someone submitted it. Maybe I guess the filmmakers probably submitted it. Possibly. Yeah. Um. And yeah, just a truly outrageous film to see in the big screen. Something I can imagine. I can just like, I mean, what was the what was the general reaction of the crowd? Was it and stunned was it, silence? <laughs> and was it late night or was it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. It was fairly and, and so on. boozy, so fairly boozy. Oh yeah, well yeah. It's a, it's, yeah, it's yeah. A, you know, even if it's not boozy for other people, it's always boozy for us. A film festival, yeah, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and I mean, the I would say that the the thing I can imagine, the thing I can imagine with it is like you know, obviously like. Be, been sort of long-term horror fans and we've been through various phases of like being into super gore and all the rest but um i i don't really find I, it's not i i would find any of it shocking but i was more sort of shocked by what i was seeing yeah as, yeah. It, as it appears you're like sort of chuckling along almost like being like holy shit i can't <laughs> believe that they did this <laughs> do you know what i mean and i mean for <clears> such a low budget film it Absolutely clips along at a great pace. We're talking, was it 75 minutes long? 75 minutes, which, oh man, great. I mean, it's one of the, absolutely, it's, I mean, some of the films we've watched down, you know, sat down to, to watch here. And uh, well, I f- I, maybe, okay, maybe just a couple. I've been like, I'm not sure I can be really bothered with this at two hours or whatever, two, two, yeah. two and a half, even sometimes. Yeah. Um, but this 75 minutes, like, oh, I didn't even manage to finish a second beer. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> it totally zips along, and it's it's uh, I, what I will say for the guys for being for um, presume, I I am actually intrigued. I wonder if they were on. They must have done some sort of media course or some sort of filming. I'm guessing, so, but there's so little information about it. It's... There's zero information about it. So, uh, so they must have had like at least some knowledge of how to sort of put put a film together anyway. But it's it's really well paced. It's funny. It's like you know, like you know. I mean, the acting's hammy as hell because there's no yeah. real actors in it. Yeah, I, think it's, um, I mean, I guess it's kind of intentionally that way to an yeah. extent. Um, I, and it, it sort of dips a little bit for me, only very briefly, um, in the sort of whole flashback sequence in the middle. 
For the for how the taint came about. How the taint came about. Yeah, yeah. It's a slight lull in that, but I think it's just because there's no extreme violence going on. No extreme violence, <laughs> but there is a heavy Nazi influenced advert that, that, that they've made for their for their uh, cock enhancer, which is brilliantly that called a... Coxantium. <laughs> That completely blindsided me. That that Nazi trailer again. I was Absolutely like, crazy. Like, how can they shoehorn in any more offensive stuff? Oh, they have. They have. <laughs> so, so basically, they're likening. Oh God, it's so. When you really think about it, it's so bad. It's like anyone with the smaller. Yeah, I think the, the Nazi guys come in with a, a measuring device, and if your cock's smaller than that, you get killed. Yeah. So basically, it's like they're. Oh, I don't know. Is that suggesting that Jews have small penises? Should I not oh, go down that route? Know. Okay, I don't um, know. <laughs> I'll not go down that route. And I, <laughs> yeah. Now, sorry, I won't cut that out because we're not going to plan to do it. It's just going to have to stay in. Unfortunate, but there we go. Um, but yeah, it's weird. And then, yeah, so basically, the idea is if you don't want to be killed by a Nazi persecutor, inject your penis with coxantium, and you'll That's have wild. a huge old dong. And the thing, and their oh my god, and their test subject was a bat that they showed. <laughs> The guy they're trying to get finance for. That's just this bat with a huge cock and ball. That's <laughs> mad. It's, it's just so total weird. Total madness. Total madness. It's uh, insane. Yeah, I, I applaud uh, their imagination. I really do. It's oh, so far brilliant. Right. And it, it skirts for me. The thing that I really like is it like uh, it really skirts into the sort of uh, the whole um, sort of uh, post-apocalyptic. Uh, you know, it's obviously you know a sort of. Oh, horror gore film but yeah. also like it's got that sort of real post-apocalyptic sort of vigilante gang violence yeah, yeah, thing yeah. going on as well with oh. the sort of the roving gang they, gang they come up against so the, 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 we'll the crew a bit. the crew <laughs> oh my <laughs> god fucking hell have you got a note of their names at all about because some the only one I've got a what was it alligator fuckhouse was that not one of them alligator fuck <laughs> 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 yeah. that is brilliant and, and sort of the, the sort of badass gang that they encounter is led by his PE teacher. Yeah. His gym teacher, who is a sort of gay... Is he is he out of the closet? Is he not? Is he or it's, not? I mean, who I, knows? I don't think so. It's hard to say because he's got this very match. I've, I've got to be I honest, like, of, but it's got like a training. I'm one of my favourite bits. It's but, like it's like the training <laughs> montage of of the of the of the gym guy, but they even managed to shoehorn an erection into that section. Yeah, it's like totally. absolutely wow. Well done, guys. Yeah, it's There's great. That not, montage not one is scene without a, a cock somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. So <laughs> totally. I know the whole thing. So uh, that character is great. I can't remember. I can't remember what his name is now. Um, what is he called? The cat. The uh, the. Oh God! I mean, who, who cares? Yeah, who cares? <laughs> well, he is called here. I've got it here. Houdini. For oh, some right. Okay, that's Houdini. okay. Yeah, uh, he's brilliant in it. Uh, really, really great performance from that guy. I think uh, Cody Crenshaw. But I mean, like, it, it's not even worth saying anyone's names, really, because you I actually had them. to look through. None of them went on to do anything else ever. No, I don't think. I think the uh, the lead lady playing Miss Sandra. Um, She'd been in some things before, done but not after. Uh, <laughs> G- Colleen Walsh, I believe. Yeah, she uh, actually got a really interesting look to her. I quite, I quite liked her. Oh uh, yeah, totally, totally. And, uh, and she was good, uh, like she's playing great a sort of, sort of a, a low budget version of Scorny Weaver, I guess. <laughs> yeah, total badass, stomping about in like shorts and uh, in sort of safari shorts with a machine with yeah. a uh, what do you call it, pump action shotgun. Yeah, what was she, oh god, what was her? As she's like a job as a park ranger and she's like shooting squirrels squirrels what heads off it's like what the fuck is going on here <laughs> it's total insanity it's mad that whole flashback with her and her husband is absolutely brilliant oh well. I love that's one of my favourite bits I mean I will give a bit a little bit away here um, so yeah so he drinks the water and then tries to kill her and then she smashes his face in but all the way through to his brain and yeah. just, just holds it for like it seems like an unbelievable Remove, length of time. Removes his brain. Yeah, and it just and holds removes it. Removes his brain, crying and yeah. looking at it. And yeah, and then and then just chucks it in the bin. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. And the other, well, obviously the the sort of the main, the main character, uh, fellow Ginny, is uh, played by one of the directors. Another director. Uh, so uh, Drew Baldock, but the other director 
I think he's he appears in a couple of tiny bit parts. Yeah, whatever, Dan, Dan. He's one of the Nelson. Nazis, I think. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Dan <clears throat> Nelson. He's he's one of the Nazis, I think. But um, he tended to stay behind the camera. Uh, the other character, uh, the other main character, is uh, Ludus. Who is uh, yes? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Absolute insanity. What has to be one of my, one of my favourite reveals. <laughs> <laughs> in a film if you just see him from behind for so long and I, I, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone but just you know when you actually get to see his face it is incredible yeah and especially that <laughs> scene after when he's explaining incredible. himself to um, to Phil and Miss Andrews it's like I think actually yeah it's wow it's just <laughs> god oh my the whole thing's entrancing in the worst possible way it's it is I mean it's that's the thing I mean it's it's so simple there's not not really anything to it it really is just the, the sort of uh, journey uh, to I guess discover well where, where they discover what, what happened and the sort of where the taint came from but yeah you know, there's, you know, <clears throat> and, uh, and the more we go through speaking about it I just cannot reiterate the amount of massive spurting prosthetic cocks yeah, absolutely left, right, and center. You've never seen anything like it. You will have never seen anything like it. But the first time you see it, like, wow, that's crazy. But they just keep on hammering it's it. It's just non stop. It's <clears throat> absolutely non stop. It just keeps on going. Abs- <laughs> absolutely <laughs> wild banter. And yeah, I mean, I think that um, it's if if you're a if you're a genre fan you really should try and track down a copy of this film yeah it's not going to be easy um i guess if you're in the, if you're it's so it's very hard to find out even where it's been released it's definitely mm. been released in france yep, it's also definitely. been released in the states you can get it directly from and trauma in the states australia and it's been released in australia which is where we got our copies from so yep. we had to order our <clears throat> copies from australia mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. it's had n- it seems to have not had a release anywhere else as far as i can tell because i was trying to find a uk release and there was absolutely nothing yeah zero and uh, i mean you, you can go- buy it on amazon in the uk but it will be a french copy or an australian copy or I, I think I don't think I don't think sure the US ones in print anymore. I'm not entirely sure, but well, you can buy it from Troma themselves. But right, okay, I think okay. only on, I think <clears throat> only on only on DVD. Or you could um, go to uh, Troma's new um, uh, streaming service. Yeah, Troma now. Yeah, yeah. So can, there, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, I wonder how much. I wonder how much it actually. I wonder how much it costs to stream it. I'm not sure. You can buy it digitally, I think, for about twelve dollars. I looked at it briefly. Um right, okay. it might be less than that actually. Um but yeah, what I would say we 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 got our well being in the UK, we got our disc from Australia and I think it was about eleven pounds or something. Yeah. Um including postage including from postage. Australia. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Hard to argue with to be honest. Absolute madness and well worth the money. Well worth the money. Oh, yeah, as a yeah. as a Blu ray that I will not be selling in my to sell pile yes mine is uh, staying yep my, <laughs> mine is staying on the shelf yeah, um, totally. everything else we've done in this podcast I am going to sell um, but I'm going to keep that one just because what a thing to have in your arsenal <laughs> oh yeah absolutely and, well uh, like uh, j- just thinking about another, another another real plus point for me as well is the uh, the soundtrack <clears throat> which oh, is absolutely yes. fantastic oh, I'm, absolutely that was, fantastic that's actually my second note soundtrack and just three exclamation marks it is That's wild. Terrific. It's definitely, definitely, and it's got a real carpenter vibe in places, but also yeah. really, really sort of upbeat, very early. snappy. Yeah, but it's totally preempted the sort of. I don't know if it's still ongoing, but this that whole sort of synthwave yeah, um, yeah. fad that was uh, was kicking about for a while. Interestingly, and, it like, is uh, the soundtrack is available on their website on vinyl. I did see that. There's only 200 copies. Uh, mm, I'd be tempted. And they're still selling it. <laughs> I, I'd be tempted. If you want to go in on like, uh, I don't know if we get two, we'll get, we'll get pumped for customs, whatever happens, I guess. But Yeah, probably. Unless we can just tell probably. them. It's a, oh, they'll send us a gift, surely. <laughs> yeah, get them to market. <clears> so, I mean, yeah, gift. the interesting thing about these guys is like, I followed them on Facebook, um, you know, kind of after I saw the film. Yeah. And they've released all kinds of weird... They've released the soundtrack on cassette. They've released the yeah, film yeah, yeah. on various colours of VHS. Um, you can still buy the DVD from their website. You could <clears throat> um, buy it as a stream through Vimeo for a while. I don't think they do that anymore. Um, so, yeah, it's been interesting just to see 
they keep kind of ticking over doing these little bits and pieces and I quite like that just a wee independent film that seems to just keep on kind of running it's got, it's got, it's got some serious fans as well so and they have I think the, the film they did after that um, is Science, Science Team, Team which I've not watched as yet um, interestingly was only available as a 720p stream uh, on right. Vimeo when I was going to get it I was thinking about it oh I'd rather wait for a 1080 but I'm now thinking maybe a 1080 doesn't exist <laughs> probably not um, no. so yeah I've not um, seen that but apparently it gets pretty wigged out as well um, well it's interesting because that was so this film was directed by uh, Drew Baldock and Dan Nelson but mm-hmm. Science Team I think was just Drew Baldock yeah yep. and looking into their careers so Dan Nelson seems to have gone into editing documentaries yep um, and hasn't done any further directing uh, yep. since then. So he's obviously cut, cut himself a wee career in, a, in Is editing. He, was he not done quite a lot of special effects stuff as well? No, I think that was, uh, was that Drew Baldock. Drew right, yeah, right. um, he <clears throat> has gone on to a lot of special effects stuff, including uh, for Troma, uh, mm-hmm. a couple of Troma films mm-hmm. as well. So he's obviously sort of stuck around in that world as well. I haven't seen... He did a short film as well... Uh, Astronauts or something... Uh, um, oh, there's something else that are associated with uh, yeah. uh, Crude as a short crude. film. Yeah, I've, yeah, only, I've, only seen, I've only seen a trailer for that. But well, you can get that on their website as well. Um, I think you can stream it, stream it from them and on the on their website. So yeah, basically, uh, if you if you you know if you just Google, I think it's is it just the taint dot com? I can't remember. But, the taint dot com, um, I think it is. Actually, you'll get yeah. you'll get all their stuff on that. So yeah. <clears throat> Um, yeah, but yeah, if you want the Blu-ray, you'll have to go out with because I guess Troma um, to go for the rights for that. I guess. Yeah, <clears throat> throat craziness. Uh, anyway. um, so yeah, I mean, I think well, I think there's uh, probably not much else to, oh, to say about that. I guess we'll sum up. But like, I mean, wise. Do, uh, what, what? Well, what? Yeah. Do you like it? I guess that's where oh. we we'll finish this. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you something else actually that that, okay. that, that, I, that I will mention <laughs> um, is. There's some really great sort of little innovative moments in it as well. There's that that little animation that's in it as well. Oh yeah, stuff like that, yeah, that's that really is well excellent. done. Yeah, yeah. So it's got some quite really nice like little elements that have mixed up into the whole thing as well, and it all just works as a really nice whole. Um, so, uh, oh yeah, and I've, uh, my final note here as well. Just keep an eye out for the scene where the guy duct tapes his uh, face back on. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and also the uh, look out for the homemade abortion scene as well. Oh my god! Yeah, and also the internal sex shot. <laughs> like when we look yes. out for that. Yeah, there we go. Wow. Oof, dear. Yeah. In- innovators, <laughs> these guys. Innovators. <laughs> um, so yeah, well, we have a little sum up. What do you think, John? You know what? I really like it. Um, I can imagine people that are not into this kind of film or the or the genre in general would be absolutely appalled by this film i mean 100 percent absolutely hate it um <clears throat> uh but i think you know the the mode that it's in and they know their audience let's be honest um and their audience is them as well i guess yeah um so they just wanted to go out and make a film see what would we find just absolutely out of the out of the woods mad and they've pulled it off perfectly um would i recommend it to the general public absolutely not no um would i reckon you know if you like peter jackson's early films but would like to see it way more fucked up this is the film for you yeah perfect something up there <coughs> yeah i mean i um i'm gonna mirror that as well i think it's a great like a, if you're a sort of general horror stroke exploitation uh, fan then you know you, you there's a lot to like in this you know oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. super low budget the guys have done an amazing job uh, considering what they had uh, to go on great special effects loads of fun just absolutely outrageous and to even make a film that specifically you know that, that it's about uh, men being turned into misogynistic killers uh, who just want to um spray jizz over women and uh, <laughs> smash their heads over rocks it's quite a bold move and the thing is it's actually you know I can imagine it like you know I, I mean the film basically did fly under the radar it didn't cause any controversy at all as far as I can see mm. but it could easily be the type could have easily been the type of film that people would get really offended at but you know 
I think it's a pretty knowing film as well. The guys oh, do yeah. seem to, you know, they know, they, you know, they know, they know what they're up to, and they're, you know, they're they're having a laugh uh, with it at the, uh, uh, and yeah, highly recommended. A lot of fun, uh, brilliant little. Um, <laughs> and well done to Troma for for getting it out there. Yeah, well, well done for the bit. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, that's giving it a bit um, of a wider audience, which is only a good thing. Highly recommended. Uh, certainly a great night, uh, a great sort of Friday night with a couple of beers. Uh, a film get Absolutely. your pals around and I mean really you could really drop the bomb on some folk with this one oh you? Jesus you've yeah. got, if you've got a bunch of mates who are into wigged out films then get them onto this it's yeah absolutely, absolutely. If, if they haven't seen this this would be a real ace up your sleeve <laughs> <laughs> totally totally brown highly recommended okay well uh, that's enough of our summing up and uh, time to get on with our next regular feature the Blu-ray review Woo! So uh, we've we've already discussed the fact that it has been released on Blu-ray in a couple of places. Our, ours is a showing copy. Yeah. Um, now this is going to be an interesting one because the film, of which I believe you're going to get, you're going to get into this a little bit more than I am. Yeah, John. I'm going to try and I'm going to try and stave off a little, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. The film. So the the quality of this Blu-ray is, I would imagine, as good as you are ever going to get with this film. Yeah. It's been shot on video. Yeah, uh, which John's going to delve into a little bit. Mm. <laughs> the image quality isn't going to ever be amazing. It's perfectly serviceable, and the audio. What's it? It's got a. Is it? Has it got? A, it's got a stereo soundtrack on it. I think is you've it, got the Blu-ray handy. I don't have it. Yeah, uh, I don't really tell you very much about it, to be honest. No. I mean, I think. Uh, oh, hang on. Uh, I think there's a stereo just, mix on it. It just says, "Yep, yeah, stereo." Dolby Digital. There you Dolby go. Digital stereo, yeah. Um, and so, from that perspective, the film's fine. You know, it's like a super low budget film, shot on video, um, unprofessionally. Um, so, uh, yeah, looks fine for for what it is. It's never going to blow you yeah, away. I mean, really. like it's some, like, it's some like the, watching a whole movie. Yeah, I mean, some of the interior scenes are god awful. Um, yeah. so the lower light stuff is pretty bad I mean I, I think you know I was <clears throat> just briefly looked at one of the extras which was um, the behind the still uh, behind the scenes stills just a wee yeah. a very short kind of photo gallery and it looks like they were using the Panasonic HVX 200 <laughs> uh, there you go <laughs> which is uh, <clears throat> I won't go on about it for too much but you know being a video girl for myself I was very interested in that camera when it came out um, but one of the things what I it was uh, I think it's best shooting mode with 720p, so I think that's what this film was possibly shot in. Right. Um, I'd be happy. And a guy on Blu-ray.com reviewed it and said it was 720p, but where he got his information from, I don't really know. Um, so, yeah, it was, it, was, it was an interesting camera when it came out. Because um, it's shot in these things called P2 cards, which at the time came in 4 and 8 gigs or something like that, if I remember correctly. And to get I can't remember which card it was but <clears throat> to get I think you got four minutes of 1080 footage on one right. of those cards so it was right. basically it was basically like shooting on film but on video yeah. um, so that's why I think they might have gone 720p just to fucking save some space <laughs> because yeah, the other totally. thing was those cards were unbelievably expensive Shit. you're talking like a four gig card was over a hundred quid like well over a hundred quid near Shit. could could even have been up to 200 so it's like as, as soon as i saw when it came out i was like well i'm out of the game for that it's no question about it it's just pointless to me yeah um, so yeah so I, i'm guessing it might have been shot at 720p I mean, it's, only, it's only a guess it's only a guess but and and obviously it's yeah, I think it was like a, a third of an inch sensor. So that's basically, you know, you oh god, that's 
that's handicap out of Argos style these days. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, there's you know there's no shallow depth of field because it was almost impossible to pull off. Um, so it looks very video, no question about it. Yeah, um, I mean it looks super video, but I mean I guess like you know I mean well I was watching it on well we both watched it on projectors didn't we? Yeah. Um, but I mean you know it's the image is as good as it's going to be. You're not good. With, I mean, yeah, it's not going to be ever be any better than it is. I, I'm really. going to say I'm going to say it is what it is. Um, it is. I know. There's no way around it. Yeah. Uh, perfectly serviceable for the film. Um, and the actual, it's got a really wild uh, title title uh, oh, screen that comes. I love up. the it's title screen. Total total insanity. I think I think that uh, sort of leads you in nicely to what you're about to watch. It's yeah. Like, totally, All right. Okay. Totally. It's just this. Yeah. Very kind of eighties uh, VHS nuts. craziness. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a, there are quite a lot of features, considering it's a film that uh, you can't find any information about yep. at all out there. So we've got what well, there's three deleted scenes on it, which I did watch. Um, yeah, watch them and deleted for a reason, I would guess. Yeah, uh, I yeah, would say. yeah, yeah. As as most deleted scenes are, yeah. um, <laughs> there is a director's commentary. Now I listened to about the first fifteen minutes of that. Yeah, um, me too. Yeah. Fairly. Uh, I mean, there was a couple of. It's really you're not going to get a lot of information about it it's more sort of them like having a laugh about what was happening while they were filming yeah there's and, really and there's also like someone in the background too like well there almost, seems to be their pals audible. yeah it's like yeah. it's like an audible chat you're like I'm, I'm out yeah and they're, 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 they're talking amongst each other to this person that's inaudible yep. as well which is a bit frustrating but yeah it's actually interesting you're talking about memory cards there's a little bit of chat when <laughs> up to where I'd uh, listened to of them talking about losing lots of footage All right, and play like, just deleting it and then having Ooh. to go and refilm and stuff oh, so Jesus. they'd be like yeah this is the second that this footage is the second time I had to shoot this and blah 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 um, <laughs> um, so it's it, there's also a cast commentary which I'd be pretty interested in hearing as well. I mean, I presume that most of the cast were just pals of theirs. Certainly from the behind-the-scenes uh, slideshow, it looks like... If, well, two things about the behind-the-scenes slideshow, I would say. They look insanely young. Yep, yep. It, in the actual film, nobody looks quite as young. Um, but the when you know you see the filming process, and it, also the other thing is that it just looks like a bunch of mates all mucking in. Yep. You know, there's no real proper equipment or anything there you know it's just basically a sort of real guerrilla filmmaking vibe to it yeah um yeah. that's actually quite it's very short but it's a reasonably interesting sort of glimpse into how they made the film yeah i suppose um, there's probably no real uh more behind the scenes footage because there was no space in the cards to film any yeah <laughs> totally <laughs> they probably only had one camera as well yeah yeah probably had one card just constantly offloading yeah. it constantly offloading <laughs> totally <laughs> God, that'd have been a nightmare back then. Having yeah, to have a laptop oh. and a hard drive. It's oh. wild. Now looking at me now, I'm shooting 4K on a, a 128 gigabyte card that costs like 50 quid. Yeah, <laughs> it's just well, crazy. I was, I was, um, I was here in uh, the, this. Oh God, here I go. I'll catch myself. I'm sinking into some boring chat. Anyways, <laughs> here, you can get a solid state drive. Hun- a, what was it? One terabyte solid state drive for 160 quid now. Yep. Yep. I almost I mean, bought a, almost bought a two terabyte one the other day for two hundred and twenty quid. But uh, yeah, wild. wild, absolutely wild, wild, wild times, crazy times. Um, and there's also a trailer, and then there's a little sort of trauma section you can go into as well. That's got a whole load of uh, trauma trailers and nonsense trauma, on it as well. Trauma guff, I think. General yeah, trauma which, guff, that which I sort of them. flicked into, but then didn't actually uh, didn't didn't sit and watch. But they're always a good laugh on those uh, trauma trailers and stuff. Yeah, yeah totally. So yeah, I mean, I'd say as a as a Blu Ray, I mean, considering how cheap it was as well when we got it, eleven quid. Yeah. including postage from Australia wild um, yeah it's great it's uh, it's, uh, it's you know you're getting the film in as good quality as it can be with some interesting enough features I guess I would actually quite like to listen to the whole uh, I'd be interested to hear what the cast commentary is like and I would quite like to listen to see if there is any information to be gleaned from the director's commentary later on but it mm. didn't sound like it was going to be that yeah unfortunately you know at the end of the day I just don't have a great deal of time to delve into it um, well that's the thing uh, but you know <clears throat> yeah would I recommend the Blu-ray of course I fucking would I'm just a little disappointed that they didn't use the original artwork on the front oh um, yeah yeah. Uh, have you looked at the original artwork on the disc uh, yes on it is a pink skull that if you look closely is made up entirely of cock and balls yeah 
Classic. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Love that little touch. Fucking perfect. Beautiful. Right. Absolutely beautiful. So that's a Blu-ray review. Uh, it's time for our final section. Oh. What would James Furman think? James Furman was the director of the British Board of Film Censorship, sorry, classification, from 1975 to 1999. And we ask ourselves, what would James Furman do? What would James Furman do? What would James Furman say? We ask, what would James Furman do? Tell us, James, what would you say? This is an interesting one. Mm. Um, it has a not. It was. It's not even been through the BBFC. They've not. Nope. They've not tried to submit it. There's no evidence of it ever being submitted. You go onto the BBFC's website. It was. It's not that it's been rejected or anything like that. I think they've just decided not to go for it here. Mm-hmm. You saw it at a film festival, and obviously, film festivals get away with showing completely anything uncertified material. Yeah because they're a film festival you know they, they'll they get a license from the council um, which can overwrite any of the ratings as well so yeah I mean uh, that's not unusual to see films like this turn up at, at festivals over here but certainly uh, has not been through the BBFC I'm interested to see what I I think it would be I would surely get an 18 fine oh yeah I think no. it has yeah, to yeah. it has to there's no there are, there are no actual penises on display. It's all dildos. But you know, let, let's keep in the true spirit of this section. What would James Furman think? James Furman, he, former like, director of the BBFC, who <laughs> presided the, over many... 80s, 90s. Yep. Many I, cut to ribbons, many, many cut, banned oh, films. Oh, what would he think? If I he know, sat down I and watched got, this right now, from, have, from, the, from the other side... <laughs> <laughs> we have. I think... Is our our first fool spinning in his grave? I, I mean, I think he would be. be he would be absolutely he would be deeply unimpressed with this film. He would be fucking horrified by this film. Absolutely horrified. He'd probably take it as an example of um, the kind of the kind of film that the BBFC is is required. You know, it's necessary. They're there. This is the job they're meant for. Stopping <laughs> this kind of thing. I mean, the gore, the sex, but not the sex. I mean, there isn't actually any actual sex in it. But the the uh, the, the, the the sheer number of cocks using <laughs> daubers. And we're um, talking. We've got we've got uh, blood and breast as well. Let's blood not and forget breast. that. I which mean, was an instant no no from him. It's not. He's not got the his defence for a lot of. Uh, you know, some things did get past him if they were art house films. Absolutely no argument that this is an art house film at all. No. Although, I guess the gore and bad taste got through completely unscathed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you never know. I think you never but, know. But the context of this. Oh yeah. No, there's no. I think yeah. I think we're talking full on, like spinning so fast that the yeah the, the, I, I, the wood's I, starting to steep smoke <laughs> in, in his coffin. <laughs> yeah, I just you know I think it's uh, yeah the context when everything happens it's you know it's you know he got the all he would see is violence against women yeah end of story he wouldn't see any of he wouldn't see the stupidity of value he wouldn't see the comical no. value about it he would be absolutely fuck yeah you know what I think this could be even a nine on his scale <laughs> I know we only go one to five, <laughs> but I think if you get five spinning in his grave, and he'd also be a four morally outraged. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally, absolutely. I I can't think of many many films that he. I mean, I guess that if he'd got to see any of the really or like the or sort of August Underground films or anything like that, which yeah, are you know yeah. like seriously oh, horrible reprehensible, or, yeah, yeah, or the uh, Guinea Pig or or anything like that, which. Doesn't even doesn't even have the sort of knowing humour and the sort of you know sort of sort of winking nod that this yeah. does. I mean, they they he would think they were worse. Yeah, I can't even imagine. I've not seen it, but I can't even imagine what would happen to him if uh, he saw a Serbian film. Oof! Do you think he'd actually explode? Uh, he'd he'd be ex- talking about a yeah, graveyard explosion. Be an outright ban. He'd explode. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. The whole graveyard <laughs> would go up. Tombstones yeah. flying into the stratosphere. <laughs> <laughs> 
amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, I think we've got it. I think we've we've nailed it there. But I uh, I will say um, we might have to come back and just sort of uh, tack on a little addendum. We probably won't. <laughs> but I have uh, I have emailed the trauma oh, yeah, yeah. PR department to ask them if they considered getting a film released in the UK and uh, if not why. I think yeah. this day and age, I think it probably would get past. Probably. Yeah, I think, I'm I think sure. it might. Sque- I mean, you just don't know. It's it's a you, tricky yeah, one. It's you don't a tricky know. I mean, one. I think with the two and it might get past. Maybe I think that's all yeah. that would save it. Um, but that wouldn't. No, Fermi wouldn't see that. He'd just be no, like, "No, Fermi wouldn't at all." No, the, the, this He's fucking livid. Yeah, everything he abhors, really. This would, um, be, uh, this would be the type of film that when we were kids and we were reading the Dark Side magazine, that you'd see, you'd get like a sort of six-page article on or something, and you'd just be like, "Oh man, I need to see that film." <laughs> <laughs> you know you'd be like, "You've been reading about these insane films." that you never really, you know, which, you know, we'd have to go on a sort of hunt for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's exactly what would have happened with this one. So, yeah, there you go, James Furman. Absolutely fucking livid. <laughs> <laughs> no happy at all. At all. Um, Excellent. All right, well, I think that brings us to the end of our little uh, spiel on the taint. And that has been, an in- I have to say, an absolute hoot from start to finish I'm really glad we did this one it yeah yeah totally fucking brilliant Absolutely yeah I mean I'll brilliant. sum up by saying I think this film is great I love it it's um, for all its little flaws it is still almost a perfect oh. film oh, it's <laughs> thoroughly thoroughly enjoyable. thoroughly um, enjoyable get involved and you know do follow the guys on Facebook it's uh, it's just the taint if you, if you type in the taint on Facebook you're going to get this um, do check them out they've got like little updates and wild stuff that you can buy and you never know um, they might release their own version um, again when uh, I, I don't know after of trauma just owned it forever or if it's licensed for a while I have oh, no I idea um, but anyway get involved and yeah and they still sell the VHS from now, now and again if you're into that kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> right, absolutely right. Excellent. All right. Well, um, oh, do, I can't remember. Do, do we reveal what the next film is? I think we what do. do. We usually do. We do. I think we do. We do. This is oh, possibly oh, right. Possibly take a moment. Take a moment. Most, this is probably the most tenuous. Like, it, no, it's, 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 it's not probably. <laughs> It is easily, it, it is. <laughs> easily the so, most link. We are moving on from the taint <laughs> to the bird with the crystal plumage. And why is that, Chris? Because they both have the in the title. Hooray! Hooray to us! Hooray to us! Look, it's a link, and it's totally acceptable. We're moving on, and I'm super excited about this one. Me too, uh, yeah. as well. I'm a big fan of the film. I've not seen it for a very long time. Despite having owned it on Blu-ray for years, mm-hmm, <laughs> I've actually mm-hmm. not watched it on Blu-ray yet. So I'm, uh, I'm very excited about watching it. Just uh, in fact, I've owned two e- copies on Blu-ray. Yeah, I've got. I've uh, one of my copies is now in the to go list. Um, yeah. I believe it now. If I ooh, Bird with Crystal Plumage. Mm. Is that the one? Mm. Or is it? Mm. <laughs> I can't remember. Remember, like <laughs> I released one of our it, uh, early films, and it was, was Sterato did the um, cinematography. I don't know if it was that or Cat and Nine. I think it was Cat and Nine Tales, and he released it in Sterato Vision, which was basically a massively cropped four three. Oh. <laughs> it's just like, but the thing is, they couldn't do anything about it. It was like this is the copy you've been given. Uh, it's an interesting thing we'll bring up about uh, Arrow. I guess um, when we do that episode, uh, so they've released quite they've re-released a fair whack um, of their catalogue um, yeah. especially the original stuff um, mainly because when they first got it they, had, they didn't have very much clout so it was basically we want a copy of this film and the company would say that's all we've got fuck off take it or leave it Yeah. Um, and they've gone back once they've got a bit of money behind them and done their own restoration so an interesting one yeah absolutely I'm really looking forward to it a film that both of both of us are very familiar with uh, and we've been watching since we were in our teens many mm-hmm. many moons ago um, I think probably in our teens we must have got it in our teens yeah, I would imagine so sure yeah, we yeah. had a, a dodgy copy from somewhere yeah um, so I think we may actually uh, be, uh, in fact probably before this episode comes out we may have done another side episode as well 
Yeah, well, well cut that back because that will have happened yeah. already. And, uh, <laughs> and we'll be another three episodes down the line. Um, <laughs> so there you go. Um, thanks very much for listening. And uh, we'll see you next time. Yep, for the Bird of the Crystal Pilgrimage, unless another side mission appears. <laughs> yes. Cheerio. Bye. Cheers, folks. <laughs>